everybody and welcome to The Flute Practice. Today I'm going to be looking at the five most common mistakes I see beginner flutists make. All of these mistakes are going to have an impact on your sound, so if you are struggling with your sound, you might want to check this out and see if you are making any of these mistakes. Okay, number one, one of the most common things I see flutists doing is turning in too much. And by this, I mean you are covering too much of the tone hole with your lip. And initially, this is easier to do because you find the notes a little bit more easily. And it sounds kind of nicer around you, but actually you're often killing your sound. So I want you to just practice, perhaps even just on a B, rolling that flute in and out and just hearing what it does to your sound. And if there is a point where the sound is bigger and fuller, even if you lose a little bit of the focus, it's easier to focus the sound when you're turned in more, but you lose a lot of the volume and it's going to come back to haunt you because you're going to struggle later on in various registers on the flute. The other big mistake I see flutists making is they put the flute too high up on the lip. And the reason many beginners do this is because once again, it is a little bit easier to especially find those low register notes, so G, A and B, which is often where we kind of start. So we start there and it's a bit easier to find those notes, but like the previous one, this is going to come back to haunt you and bite you. So please, please, please don't get into habit of playing too high up on the lip. If you are in the second register, perhaps you're there already and you're really struggling with this register, check that you are not too high up. See what happens if you move it down just a little bit. We really want to have a nice cushion of lip sitting kind of just over the hole. So it's that little cushion of lip that's really covering the tone hole. Be patient here because new things are always challenging and see if it's easier now to get those high register notes. If we're too high up on the lip, we're kind of cutting off the ability of that lower lip to move backwards and forwards, which is so important in those register changes, in dynamic changes, in basically all of your flute playing. Okay, another really common one, and we're sticking with the embouchure here for a moment, and that is the flute is not centered in the middle of your lips or in the middle of your embouchure for that matter. So you want to check where when you are doing your per, where is the little tone hole forming in your lips? Where's the aperture forming? So if it's in the middle, you want to make sure that the flute is sitting absolutely in the middle. If it's a little bit off to the side, you want to make sure that that tone hole and the flute tone hole absolutely line up dead center. Anything else is going to cause trouble. So we will get... Hopefully you can hear how I come in and out of the sound when I'm moving it side to side. A really common problem is hand position problems. And this is really difficult because the flute is super awkward to hold in the beginning. Like it is a really awkward instrument. And all I can say to you beginners out there is you need to spend time with your instrument, really just finding something that is comfortable and balanced. I'm gonna run you through some of the classic things I see in beginners. One of them is that you have this part too high up. So it's not sitting on the top of this kind of joint here, but rather sitting a little bit below that so that you kind of have it, the actual joint holding the flute, which is just not very practical. It tends to slip around. If you kind of feeling like you never quite have stability of the instrument, it might be because you're sitting too high up here. The other problem is that you're too high up on the finger. So you're sitting over here and you will kind of get this thing that looks a little bit like this, where this is kind of reaching backwards like this. This is once again, one of those things that initially it might feel easier to hold the flute like that, but you said it, it's going to come back to haunt you. This position has potential to cause pain, discomfort, um, and ultimately results in you kind of pressing in this part of the finger, which causes tension. And this is not going to help you in the long run. So my advice, it's really like holding a nice ball in your hand or like a little hamster or something, but really the flute is just sitting on the top of that joint right over there. And this is going to be slightly different for everyone. And that is totally fine. But sitting over there and everything is just nice and cuddly and round and in like that. I'm just going to show you this position from both sides quickly. So there's that side and there's that side. The other hand position mistake often seen thumb out too far to the front 
Once again, we're misunderstanding that the flute is somehow balancing on that thumb. And then added to this, we kind of tend to lean against the rod over here with this finger, straighten that baby finger, and we're kind of, that's how we're supporting the flute. It's not very smart, guys. Anything that is touching the flute, any part of the body that is touching additionally is going to interrupt the sound of the instrument. It's going to interrupt the resonance of the instrument. We just don't want it. So we want to stay absolutely clear of that pipe like that. You can see my thumb. It's just tapping where my fingers naturally kind of come together. That's where the position of my thumb is. Uh, there is a lot of debate about this, but <laughs> that for me makes the most sense. I am thinking of the thumb kind of pushing the flute over this way a little bit. Other fingers are nice and round. And I'm thinking this pushing in this way, the thumb pushing out this way a little bit, and then resting against the lip over here. I'm going to throw in kind of like an extra 4.1 kind of point here. Sometimes people aren't kind of firm enough against the lip at the top here. And this often comes from incorrect hand position or like an imbalance in the flute where the flute is kind of also just swimming around here. I've done a whole video on balance of the flute and kind of understanding this. In fact, I've done a whole several videos on this. So I'm going to just link you guys to a playlist of those where you can explore the balance of the flute because that's what it really is. It's about exploring it. The last thing, and I think I've mentioned this in a few videos already, and that is I see so many beginner flute players that are playing kind of with their arms up or their shoulders up, or even worse, they're kind of almost resting the head joint on the top of the shoulder like this to try and balance it. Or, you know, even subconsciously kind of lifting that shoulder because they feel like the flute's going to drop. So they're kind of lifting to try and help support it. I have news for you guys. Your shoulders have kind of been doing their job without lifting themselves up in any way for as long as you've been alive. And even when you're lifting your arms, your shoulders are not the ones that are lifting up to lift your arms. Once again, newsflash. This is complicated and complex. But the point is, you can lift your arm and release your shoulder. Try it. Try it out right now. So what makes you think that you have to somehow lift your shoulders to hold your flute? Okay, guys, there are probably a ton more mistakes and things that you could be doing wrong. We're all doing things wrong all the time. And the real trick here is just to kind of unpack them, uncover them, and fix them, sort them out. This should really be done through curiosity and joy. Keep your mind kind of inquiring and curious about the problem rather than, you know, being demotivated and kind of deflated by the fact that you have a problem. We all got them, guys. It's totally fine. Happy practicing, happy flute learning, and see you next time.